That was weird. <laughs> My name's Jenna, and this is Magically Me. Today on Magically Me, we're going to talk all about the Halloween party, specifically the one that happens in Disneyland. So throughout this video, I hope to offer some really good information about the Halloween party, kind of what to expect, what you can find at the Halloween party if you decide to go, some of the mistakes that I made that I'd like to share with you, and just kind of what I thought about it. First of all, what is the Halloween party? The Halloween party is a special ticketed event that occurs on select evenings throughout the fall season. The ticket to the Halloween party is technically separate from your day pass. So in order to get into the Halloween party, you have to buy a specific ticket that ranges from about $100 to $130 depending on what day you go. So you actually don't need to purchase a park ticket for the day to get into the Halloween party. It's completely separate. Once you purchase your Halloween party ticket and you decide to go on a specific day, you can actually enter into either park three hours before the Halloween party officially starts. If you want to take full advantage of your ticket, definitely would recommend popping over to California Adventure for a little bit. I don't think many people knew that because we were the only people in costumes in California Adventure at that time, which was pretty funny. Why go to the Halloween party? Well, let me tell you, the Halloween party offers a ton of awesome stuff. There's a special fireworks show, a parade, character meet and greets everywhere that are actually characters that you sometimes wouldn't see wandering around Disneyland at all. There's also trick-or-treating, dance parties with characters, and so much more. I mean, it's packed full of such amazing stuff. So another fun thing about the Halloween party is that it's the only time that you can enter the park in a full costume past the age of 12. And let me tell you, some people were pretty dressed up. I was almost mistaking people for characters walking around the park. I mean, it's so fun to not only dress up, but to see the way that everyone is dressed up too. They also offer photo pass with your party ticket. So if you're wandering around the park and you see a photo pass photographer, those pictures won't be extra for you. You'll get a little card and you can link it to the website, you can link it to your app, and then you'll get all the pictures that come with the photo pass. And that's pretty cool because those pictures can be expensive if you don't add on the pass for the day. Well, those are some of the facts. Those facts you can mostly find on Disneyland website, but some of them I didn't quite fully understand what they actually meant until I was there. So I hope this clears up a little bit. There's a couple resources online, but I mean, you just have to read pages and pages and pages of information. So I hope that was informational. And now I'd like to talk a little bit about my personal experience and kind of go into some of my opinions on how the night should go and just offer some tips and tricks for those. First piece of advice, buy your ticket early. We made the mistake of waiting to buy our ticket and we actually had to change the dates of our trip. The Halloween party in October that we were planning on going to ended up selling out before we bought the tickets. And this was after we had booked our flights and kind of made plans. And it ended up being okay. We were able to switch our party time and go a little bit earlier and buy tickets and change flights and everything really easily. And the hotel did end up being cheaper, so it, it worked out great. But just a tip, all the nights of the Halloween party will sell out and they'll sell out in advance. So be sure to get your ticket ahead of time and don't make the same mistake we did. <laughs> when you get into the park for your Halloween party, there's a special entrance, one of the front gates, and it's just packed full of people. And in the midst of that, a huge tip would be to grab a special Halloween party map. On this map, you'll find awesome information like show times, when the cadaver dance are singing, cadaver dance. You'll also find what characters are gonna be out and where, trick-or-treating locations, and also where they offer allergy-friendly treats. And that's kind of a big deal if you have any gluten or dairy sensitivities and normal candy won't cut it for you. They actually have special locations for you to get your own type of treat. When you're at the Halloween party, like I said, there's a ton of character meet and greets everywhere, but also all the rides in Disneyland are open. And the thing that I noticed is that character meet and greet lines are extremely long and the ride lines are really short. So I would say kind of make a priority list, even just in your head or talk amongst your group and decide what's important to you. Because if we were to have sat through the entire line to meet Jack and Sally, it probably would have taken one to two hours. 
and that's something that I feel like everyone has to be willing to do. But you know, it's pretty cool to wait for the characters like that because they're special, they're only out during the Halloween party. But pick one or two that are your favorites so you don't have to wait around all night. The Holiday Haunted Mansion is amazing. It's so, so fun to ride. It's so pretty. It smells good in the ballroom scene. You'll know what I mean if you've been there. And it's just so worth it. Another ride that's themed is Space Mountain. During the fall time, it changes into Ghost Galaxy. And um, maybe it's just because I'm a wimp, but it was honestly pretty scary. <laughs> they somehow make it darker in the ride, like darker than Space Mountain. And when you're going around, they have these screens with this really creepy ghost face that keep popping up and the music is really, really intense. Um, I ended up closing my eyes most of the time, and like I said, I'm a wimp, but I think it's worth it. Do it once. If you're scared of things, just close your eyes the whole time and maybe try to tune out the music, sing It's a Small World or something instead. As far as ride lines go, they don't really have any wait times except for the Holiday Haunted Mansion. If you choose to go to the parks during the day, you can get a fast pass and do that during the day because the themed rides don't actually change just for the Halloween party. They remain open in the Halloween type theme the entire day and throughout the entire season. And actually Holiday Haunted Mansion will last through Christmas. So if you miss out on it, it's okay if you're gonna go back, but absolutely make that a priority because it's so, so worth it. Speaking of the Holiday Haunted Mansion, unless you live under a rock like me and you haven't seen Nightmare Before Christmas, be sure to watch the movie before you go to the Halloween party because there's so many references to the movie everywhere and you'll just be able to appreciate everything that much more. I mean, Jack Skellington, love him. Love him so much and I didn't even know he really existed until I watched the movie before I went to the Halloween party. If you choose to watch both the parade and the fireworks, which I highly recommend, then the best spot to watch is if you're facing the castle over a little bit towards the right side of the castle. So we could see the castle really well, but we were also just about up against the rope for where they block off the parade. And it was the perfect spot. We were able to watch the parade just turn over to our right, got some pretty good pictures. We were able to see everything. And the parade is extremely short, so to make a separate place just for the parade I don't think is necessarily worth it. It's okay if you kind of have an obstructed view, because the fireworks, then we were able to turn and face the castle and be right up against the castle. The fireworks were amazing. The fireworks were the highlight of the night, and I have not seen fireworks that good, honestly, since the Disneyland 60th anniversary. I'm not saying something, because those were pretty amazing. And they just blew the Pixar Festival fireworks out of the water. I mean, it was crazy. Definitely stand right in front of the castle for the fireworks. Parade is worth it, but not nearly as worth it. So if you have to choose one, choose fireworks and get a good spot. I wrote this in all caps in my notes because I really want to emphasize this. <laughs> the cadaver dance are amazing. And maybe I'm biased because if you know me at all, you know that I'm slightly obsessed with the dapper dance. So the cadaver dance, singing Halloween themed music on a boat with a ton of fog surrounding them just made me cry. I mean, we were taking a break sitting on a rock just waiting by the lake where Phantasmic happens and all of a sudden over the speaker the dapper dance start playing and I'll insert my reaction because, I mean, it's truth. <laughs> there we go. It's a cadaver dance. Shut up. Shut up right now. Yes. Anyway, make that a priority. They have a couple show times every Halloween party. We were fortunate enough to accidentally stumble upon the first one. And, I mean, no one takes over the space. So you can literally walk right up to the edge and be right where they are and see them super closely. And their costuming, the makeup, everything is just amazing. And they're super talented and I love them so much. Shout out to my Depper Dans. I would highly recommend dressing up. My friends and I had such a good time. We did gender bending as our favorite Marvel characters. So I was Star-Lord, my friend Nicole was Captain America, and then my friend Rachel was Loki, and I mean, people even knew what we were, which was really cool. 
And yeah, it was the best time. I love dressing up. We got to go to California Adventure before and take some pictures because it was more appropriate for our costumes and fit as well. And we just had the best time. I loved dressing up. I loved walking around and I had Baby Groot on my shoulder and yeah, it was the best time. So I would highly recommend even just doing a Disney bound if you're not comfortable in full costume. But I mean, people go all out. So if you want to go all out, don't hold back. There's no reason to. If you decide to wear a Halloween costume, be sure that you go on Disneyland's website and check their costume guidelines. They have some interesting ones that you might not think of, like cape length and dress length. So if you're planning on wearing a dress or a cape or anything like that, just double check to make sure that your costume fits the standards for Disney because they will check and they will make you pin up your cape. Right, Rachel? But adding on to that, be sure to wear comfortable shoes. <laughs> we all decided to wear tall black boots because they kind of fit our costume. And yeah, those are kind of comfortable on a normal day, but when you're walking six or seven miles around the parks, just go all out in your costume, except for your shoes. <laughs> or make your shoes go with your costume, like wear tennis shoes that match or something. Yeah, that was something that I have learned the hard way. And there were people in heels, and I'm happy for them, and they looked super cute, but I am i think my feet would fall off by the end of the night. <laughs> and finally, my last bit of advice would be to consider not going to the parks the same day that you go to the Halloween party. Here's why. We decided to get up at 6 in the morning, do magic hour at 7 a.m. because we stayed at Disneyland Hotel and had access to magic morning, and we did not take a break until we decided to change for the Halloween party. So we walked all the way back to our hotel, laid down for about five minutes, then got changed, then went straight to the opening of the Halloween party. And the Halloween party lasted until midnight. And I don't think we got back to our hotel until about 12.30. So if you think about it, we were at Magic Morning at seven, took about a half an hour break, and then we were back until midnight. I mean, I feel like I'm still recovering two weeks later. If you decide to do the parks, good for you, but take it easy because the Halloween party is something that definitely is worth saving all your energy for. There's just so much to do, so much to see, and you wanna have all the power in the world to be able to accomplish everything. And we were starting to um, kind of lose our minds a little bit at the end. And I have an upcoming vlog that documents the entire day and it's super fun and I would love for you to watch it just kind of get inside the Halloween party with us but you can definitely tell by the end of the day we're just we're kind of toast and yeah I think we're all recovering still but totally worth it right who gets to do that many hours of Disney in one day um not many people so we were very lucky <laughs> overall would I say the Halloween party was worth it definitely I loved it. I loved all the special things that they did, the characters that I got to see that I wouldn't normally get to see, and just experiencing all the special additions that Disney had specifically for the Halloween party. And my friends and I, like I said, in costume, were just having the best time running around. And it's seriously one of the best times I've ever had in a Disney park. Well, it looks like that's all the advice I have for the Halloween party. If you have any questions at all, please, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments below. If you like these tips and you want more specifically on anything related to Disney, let me know. I'd love to review. I'd love to give you advice. And yeah, if you like this, please subscribe to my videos. Send it to your friends. I have a giveaway that's going to be coming up soon, so please stay tuned for that. I'm going to be giving away one of my ears that I make through my Etsy shop, and it's going to be super fun. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. Love you. Bye.